Today is class 20 of CAD 212 on Wednesday, April 21st. Today in class, we're going to review door schedules and window schedules and then discuss color schemes. Some important dates to remember are the project is due by noon on Monday, May 3rd, and the final exam is at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, May 5th. Next week, we're going to start kind of pulling everything together, making sure everything is on our sheets, kind of go through sheets again and discuss that. And then we're also going to review for the final. Um, so we'll go ahead and jump into class today. Uh, we're going to talk about door and window schedules. These should be just reviews of what we did before, but we'll just do those again. And then color schemes. All right, so for our door and window schedules, we're going to start in our view tab, create panel and our schedule tool. I'll pick our door schedule. And for our doors, we're just gonna go by family. Height, oops, gotta double click on that. And width, and then we'll just hit okay. That's automatically going to create our door schedule. We will be using this um, to add this to our general information sheet. Uh, we'll start doing that next week. Obviously, there's not a great selection of doors here um, that are being used, um, just the single flush doors. If there were different doors, I might throw in a couple of different doors for this project, uh, just so you can see the difference. Um, but all they're all basically the same door. Depending on the information that you request in your schedule, you can get a lot more basic information on here, but this is all that we'll need for now. <laughs> So we're going to do the same thing with our window schedule. Remember that's view panel, create tab, uh, view tab, create panel and schedule tool. The so same thing, we're going to go down to windows. And for windows, we're going to use family as well. We'll use height and width as well. If you want to play with this, just to kind of figure out what the other stuff is in here, select a bunch of different ones and see. Um, actually, let's just throw in another one just so we can play with the. Let's try and see if they have anything for model. Obviously, if you did have a manufacturer, if you've got um, a Revit family for the, your doors or windows from a different manufacturer, you could have that in there as well. Um, let's just see if there's anything that populates for model. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, we'll hit OK. Ah, nothing for model. That's OK. Um, Obviously, there's no need for that. When I made this um, that floor plan, I just put in a bunch of windows. It's just two different kinds. Actually, there's three different kinds in there just to show you the difference in that, how that pops up. We can have that there. But we can't edit this again, so we can get rid of this. So if you come back over to your properties and it says fields here and edit, you can click back on edit and it'll just bring you back to this um, this options. So on models, I'm just going to highlight that. And if I press this, um, click this here, it'll remove that. And when I go back and hit OK, it'll just take that out. So it's really easy to kind of play with this and see what other options that you can get. Just remember that it's under properties, fields, and edit. And then you can change it up just to see what's going on. Um, it's just something kind of cool to play with. Um, just to see what the other options are. Let's try one more. Uh, let's try that, see if something happens. Ah, uh, 
Okay, so depending on the window that you use, some of them do have more information than others. So there's the rough, the rough width, um, this half inch here. So there is a little bit more information in some of these, and it just depends on how these windows or doors or whatever you're creating a schedule where we're built to begin with. Um, so we're not gonna actually keep that in there. So we'll go back to uh, edit and we'll go ahead and remove that. Just something else to kind of play with when you, if you feel like it. All right, um, any questions about door and window schedules? Remember once they are created, they are populated within your project browser down here. So we have our door schedules and window schedules. Uh, we'll use these next week in order to create our general information sheet. All right, so we'll move on to new stuff. Oops, that's not what I want. Uh, color schemes. So color schemes are ways that we can colorize the floor plan and kind of segment it out by the use of the different rooms. So it's just an easy visual for a client to see um, how the usage of the space is broken down uh, by different class, different room types, which is why we had wanted to create all our room types before today. So the first thing we want to do is we do want to duplicate the view so we can have use the um, this in our um, <clears throat> in our floor plan as well in our plans. So we want to duplicate the view and we want to rename that. Let's do that first. So I'm going to go back to my level one. And just a refresher on how to do that. We're going to go to level one. We're going to right click. We're going to duplicate view. Now, if you'll notice, there's a few different ways that you can actually duplicate view. Let's just do duplicate and see what happens. So when I did that, obviously it did not populate all the information that I want. So sometimes you want to use this option, other times you don't. It depends on where you are um, in your um, design development. Obviously, I do want this information to carry over to my next sheet, to my use general usage sheet, because I want this information here. So I'm going to right click and do duplicate with detailing. And that's going to give me all the little details, obviously. Um, it's going to give me an exact copy of the other one. So at this time, we're going to rename this. We call this yellow uh, level one usage. Level two and level three. So I've got level two, I've got my information there. Right click, duplicate view, duplicate with detailing. Right click, rename. All right, so now that I have my levels set, we're going to go to architecture tab, to the room and area panel. You're gonna use this drop down right here and you're gonna to go to color schemes. When you go to color schemes, you wanna make sure that you select rooms and we're going to use the name by name. And then it's going to populate this information for you. So every room that we, every different room type we created, stairs, class, lab, are going to have different uh, colors associated with them. So we can also organize the way this is um, laid out just to kind of make it a little bit easier to, to read. Um, so for like ladies room, for instance, I'll move that down closer to the stairs and the circulation. That way the more important rooms such as the classrooms, lab, things like that are a little bit higher up. Um, 
maintenance, I'll move down as well. Uh, I've got two circulations that I created here. I'll move those together. So now when I read this, uh, the most important thing is maybe classrooms, lab, offices, room, maintenance. I just made an extra, I, just, I can go back and rename that and it'll change there. Uh, maintenance, men's, ladies, stairs. Okay, we'll go from there. Um, also, you'll notice that this is what our color scheme just kind of defaults to look like and it's not very pretty, um, especially some of these browns. And you, know, you can actually change these colors. So if you write, if you double click on that, we can change what some of these colors look like. So we'll click on that one, make this more of a, a lime and we can change the saturation point. Maybe make it look a little bit more pastel like that. <laughs> That's not a pretty color. Let's maybe use pink for that. The ladies room, let's change that to, oops, that one. They can change how you want the, these to look similar to. I don't like that either. Let's get rid of that. Oh, that looks like our other color. Mm -hmm. All right, that's better. Oh, and one more. One of these bland beiges. All right, and hit apply, okay. So nothing happened. So after we do all that stuff, we need to come back to our properties tab, properties, scroll down and on color schemes, notice it says none here. So we can click on that. Here's where we need to actually make it active. And we'll go to rooms by name. Notice the information that you just worked on to create it. It's now populated in here too to make it active. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. And voila, we have our different colors in our different rooms. So you can see stairs are one color. Our circulation is another color. We've got ladies room here. Uh, all these are kind of segmented out. So it's really kind of a nice way to see uh, the visual difference between the two. Um, here we do have um, where we did the room separator. So I've got lab notated for one part and then classroom for the others. Uh, it's just kind of a nice, um, easy visualization, especially for clients where they can see the room usage really quickly. So let's go ahead and do that the same thing for, the, for level two. So it's the same process, architecture tab, room and area panel, drop down, color schemes tool. It's the same color scheme for your second floor as your first floor. So we wanna do that. Make sure that when you do the drop down here, you do rooms by name and we hit okay. Then we're gonna come back over to our properties, um, color scheme, set that from none to rooms by name same information, hit OK, and then we'll have everything else populate here. So notice all the colors are the same as the other sheet. The only difference is the hallway. So when I first created this, I named this hall and then just to see like, um, how this would work. I named this circulation and I went back and renamed the hall on the first floor. So notice that's not going to 
carry over. So I would have to make sure that I'm using the correct one each time if I wanted to create that as circulation. So make sure that when you have all your names laid out, you don't go back and change them because it'll just make things a little bit more confusing for you. Um, so there we have all that. Uh, next thing that you want to do with this information is we want to put a legend on here uh, just so it kind of gives you a little bit more ease. Um, if this, especially when you get some of these larger ones, it just makes things easy to read and easy to kind of follow, even though things are kind of straightforward. Um, but we do want to include a legend. So in order to do that, we're going to go to view tab. Oops, not view tab, sorry. Uh, annotate tab to the color fill panel in the color fill legend. Click on that. That's just going to create it for you so you can kind of bring it in here. And we have the same information that's laid out over here. You can move that and you can change the way this looks if you want to depending on how you want it laid out. So you can change it like that. Or if you want to bring it back together. You can bring it back like that. So you can do different ways that you can lay it out depending on how you want your sheet to look, which is kind of nice. So that acts actually the lecture for today. Um, let's see. Let's go to modules. This is in our construction documents phase one. For this mod, you want to go ahead and make sure you create tags for doors, windows, rooms, include area in your room tag. You wanna create a room schedule, door schedule, window schedule, and your color scheme with your legend. And with all that information created, we'll be able to come back next week and work on all our sheets and get all of that done. Um, so we'll go ahead and open the floor to any questions that you have um, you know, about today's lecture or other stuff, it's fine. Any questions, y'all? Okay, cool. Well, if there's no questions, I'll go ahead and let you go. Nice short lecture for today. Please make sure you continue working on your progress um, and refining your model and getting all that done. And um, I will see y'all Monday. Bye, I'll take care.